Um, and uh, I believe that the conversation will always continue. We do encourage you, make sure that you keep bringing your donations. It could be walking donations or also through third party, parties or emissaries. It's also important for all of us to keep the conversation uh, ongoing. So while you hear it, making sure that you onwardly also send your own uh, messages out there about the media general three foundation relief effort towards the victims of the Akosumbo Dam spillage as well as uh, those that have been affected from all sections of the country, then we are all the better for it. We're able to put together a great relief effort that is involving everybody. And again, let me reiterate this. Uh, because of the strategy we have adopted, we're collecting from everybody every facet of our society. Corporate entities and clients have also made available their promises and then also their relief items. And then for just normal middle class people who are just uh, in shirt and tie or in big um, uh, enterprises or, or shops who are also undertaking their uh, enterprises, you're also invited and we're also taking from them as well. And ordinary people like you and I who just live in single room, two bedroom, so we're cooking with uh, charcoal or small gas stoves or we're just drinking pure water, you know, not the bottled water. We also just bring in. And then um, just in case you have those youth, uh, used clothes, you sort them out well. What you would wear, you know, put yourself in the shoes of the victims and make sure that you bring those items right here uh, at the frontages of media general or, and we're just beside the Jubilee House, actually, adjacent, as we tend to call it in English. But we're just beside uh, the Jubilee House right here, Presidential Drive, Kanda Accra. And then we'll acknowledge you. Uh, I know many of you come in, you don't want to be acknowledged. That's also good. But please, bring in the donation. It's very important. Now for the mobile money platforms that we have made available, we have 59 and then for those who um, are using Merchant Lines, we have 120494. 120494. Please send in those donations and then reference it Akosumbo so that uh, we are able to distinguish or differentiate between or among uh, which of the transactions that take place on the platforms. We did tell you that we uh, have decided since the whole of last week to expand the conversation to many of the affected areas and. Um, we, we've been doing some conversations with the lead members of parliament, the various MCEs for the areas. We have um, the member of parliament for Krachi uh, East right here. Wisdom Gidisu is right here. Good morning to you, sir. Mr. Gidisu, good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know you were thinking about the victims. Exactly, you know? exactly, exactly. And then also Helen in Tosu uh, is also a member of parliament for the west side of Krachi. So Krachi West, um, she's here. Good morning to you. Good morning, Rim. You know, the good thing about um, Helen in Tosu is that uh, she had served as director of operations for the National Disaster Management Organization in the past. So she's also well versed. Now, also, both of them are part of the trust fund for these resettlement communities put together by the Volta River Authority. And so uh, it, it put matters into perspective by way of the conversation. Now, um, Auntie Ellen, you, you take a look at um, what the perennial problems are already with the banks of the Volta River that you have. Usually, what are they in terms of, uh, you know, exceeding the banks and coming into the communities by way of the water in the dam or in the lake. Yeah, thank you very much um, for the opportunity given us. Um, apart from the spillage that's talked about, when we have these perennial rains, when there's a spillage from the Bagri Dam, it affects our communities because you know that uh, in Krachi West, Krachi East, Krachi uh, in Chumru, especially Krachi East and Krachi West, we have the river. We have the Oti River, then we have the Volta Lake. So if the Volta, if the Oti River gets flooded, it affects our communities. If the lake gets flooded, it affects our communities. So apart from split, these perennial torrential rains uh, at times do affect our especially so family. Either people. side of the bank, you are affected. Yeah, the Oti River. Do, uh, 
do they meet at any point in time with the lake at, at is there a tributary? Do, do they meet at some point? Yes, they do. Oti they and do. Water Lake. Yes. Okay. They do meet. Okay. Between um when you when you're on the lake from Pando, before you get to Krachi, there's a tributary there. They meet. So there's a meeting point. Yes, there's okay. a meeting point. All right. Now Mr. Gidisu, when did you first notice as residents, and I call you as resident because even though you're a member of parliament, you're also a, st a key stakeholder looking after your, your citizens or your uh, inhabitants. When, when did you first notice that this was a bit different this year? Yes, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. And also, um, extend greetings to our chiefs and the constituents for that matter. And we are also very grateful to you for this opportunity to be able to air out, to be able to view uh, all that is happening in their constituency. Uh, crash, is crashing Chumbro. And also as a chairman for the, the, the caucus, we are always uh, in touch with the various constituencies uh, along the Uti River. I think it's only two uh, constituencies apart from uh, Okonabu Kofia Downs Place and then the Honorable Gomado. That is a uh, 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 the two consciences, Akan and, and Bwim, the, uh, the exception of these two consciences, the rest are all along the, uh, the, the Uti River. And like Honorable Helen just said, uh, it's a perennial problem. For us, it's not about the spillage. Uh, it's about any time there's torrential rains and whatever happens, you see these things, problems coming on every day. So it's a challenge that we've been uh, facing all these wires. Uh, recently, we realized that uh, as a perennial issue, this very problem is different because we have a, a limit to where this water went recedes to. And when the time, as this is approaching, we realize that it was over, over flooding and then extended across those boundaries. This has actually raised the alarm that no, this issue is a different, this thing is a different thing altogether and it's a different uh, problem as it used to be. That is why we said no. Uh, some few weeks ago, uh, we started complaining. Hey, honorable, normally there will start stops here. This time it has uh, overtaken these trees. It has, we have a, a, a landmarks that we always adhere to. So this, is, this actually raised the alarm that yes, something different is happening. As it, it used to happen, this one is different altogether. That is why we call each other and realize that no, there is a need for us to intervene and we have to visit our constituencies and see the plight of the people through the whole areas and see how best we can intervene and uh, channel their grievances eloquently and dispassionately. Uh, now, all of you have sent us pictures and videos of um, how you were undertaking the relief efforts. So how, how have you managed the relief efforts so far in terms of salvaging and trying to help so far? Madam yeah, um, so far, uh, what uh, we're trying to do is that, um, uh, you see, the, the Oti River flows through uh, Krachi to Krachi East, Nkwanta South, Nkwanta Damanko. And what has happened now is that it is farmlands, it is the farms that are so submerged we only have a few houses that are destroyed or that are submerged. But most, most, of, the, most of the disaster that has happened in, in our... It's just in the flooding. Six, in the six constituencies. Mm. Flooding that has affected... But not affected submerging of whole houses or towns. Not, not okay. towns. Not like the way we see in North Town or no, South Town. Ours, ours is different. Ours is the... Is, normal is, flood is, in is your the farms, home. Normal okay. flooding as a result of the display from the buggy down as a result of the spillage of the Akosomo Dam. Farms are more submerged than the houses as compared to um, North Town, South Town, and Central Town areas. Ours is, is the farms that are submerged. And if they had been an early warning system, if our people were alerted that- What do you mean? This is what, early warning is just letting the people know that this is what you're going to do. If they had alerted our people... Well, the VRA say they, they did simulation exercises, so it's an unwrong thing to do, so... Simulation exercise at where? 
I'm a member of parliament. If any simulation exercise is done in my constituency, I will get to know. And then we'll let our people know because uh, Ghana farms are already, um, Ghana farms are already matured and the people need to harvest. So if they had told them, they would have rushed to at least harvest. So if they are saying that there were simulation exercises, I don't know where they did the simulation exercise. But if you do a simulation exercise in Akosombo and you don't get to my constituency, you don't get in Kwantano, you don't get in Kwanta South, Krachi East, Krachi Nchumru, Biakwe, if you don't get there to let the people know that this is what you're doing, then what you have done is like uh, just... In a confined uh, area. Yeah. Okay. So, so the VRA, are not more, all of us also in the private sector were helping. Government says its inter-ministerial committee has put in a lot of money and all that. Um, what is coming to you in the other constituencies that are not getting the focus in the media? Let me start with you, Mr. Gidisu. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, you know, Krashi is in Chumbru for them, Uti region has been carved out of a the voter. So, you know, the voter lake, we have a lot of communities along the voter lake. And for OT region, almost all these six constituencies I just mentioned are also along the banks. So, Krachi is east, Krachi in Chumbru, Krachi west, and other constituencies are not different from what is happening in, in, in voter region. So, you realize that for voter region, the attention has always been uh, the North Tongue, the Central Tongue, and so on and so forth. Forgetting that we all face the same uh, challenges. Until recently, that our plight also uh, has been speculated, been viewed on television, and so on and so forth, drew people's attention to the fact that, yes, these consciences are also uh, facing the same challenge and have been submerged, most of the communities. As I speak now, over 200 communities of Krashi East have been submerged and uh, out of that, over 3,000 people have been affected. Farms, like Honorable said, not easy at all. So you realize that initially the attention has always been, uh, just as I said, uh, on a, a voter. I'm happy TV3 has actually intervened by bringing members of parliament from Oti region also on board for people to also know that we are also part of the problem. So, in fact, uh, it has not been very easy. I was in a constituency for the last two weeks, came back, went again, and came back, and it, it has not been easy at all. And uh, while we pass through as members of parliament, um, my brother, it's not easy at all. As I speak, as a chairman for the caucus in OT region, or the MPs, uh, you see, you go to Nkwanta North, uh, Nkwanta South, um, yeah, in Kwanta North and in Kwanta South, in addition to Krachis, Krasin, Chumbro, Krachi West, and then Biakuye, that is a, a Front Plains area, Honorable Abwaji's area. You see that all these communities are along the river. Yes. And they have been flooded massively. And my brother, if you go there, you see the plight of our own people. I show some of the videos. You see, like, we're I, already I, showing some on the screen. It's a, it's a, in fact, so, so, so devastating. So we are we, we appealing to. Uh, the government intervention, uh, just like you are putting all these efforts to come to the aid of the people and tend towards us so that we see how best we can solve the problems uh, facing uh, these uh, communities. It has, not been, it has not been easy at all, my brother. So, M Madam, Madam Helen, what is needed now? What also needs to be done at the national level in terms of trying to uh, put the conversation and the action point into perspective? Because we, we are told that we have an interministerial committee. So, I mean, right now the help is needed. So what is needed now for these communities? Yeah, what, what is needed, Roland, is that, uh, you see, in disaster management, you look at what has happened. And then you address the needs of the people. What has happened in Central Tongue, North Tongue, uh, South Tongue is different from what has happened in Krachi East, Krachi West, Krachi Nchumru, Nkwanta North, Nkwanta South, and Biakwe. So when you're sending out uh, relief items, you look at the needs of the people. What do they need? Then you send the items. If houses are submerged, you should know that they need mattresses, they need blankets, they need food items. In our, mm. They need clothing. Mm. In our areas, a few houses are submerged, but most of the 
uh, of the disaster that has happened in our area as a result of the spillage is that farms are submerged. So if farms are submerged, then you know what to send. You send food items. Okay, if clothing, fine, because some few houses are submerged. We need welding boots. Some of the roads are blocked. Really? Some of the roads are blocked. Okay. So uh, a, a place like Amoyukope that we used to drive to the place, you cannot drive to Amoyukope any longer because the water has surrounded the community. When you're going to, towards Chantai, the roads are blocked. Mm. So you've got to use uh, canoes or boats to be able to cross to these communities. Mm. We mm. need life jackets. Life jackets. We need, we need Wellington boots. We need food items and whatever. See, but my problem is that... Please it, go ahead. It looks like the whole thing is so chaotic. How so? Uh, the reason why I'm talking about the chaotic nature of what we're doing as a country is that there should be a central pool. There should be a central pool. But the issue is that once between two are shy, during the COVID era, when, when people were asked to contribute, after contribution, they, they, they couldn't even account for what the people contributed. So now, people are organizing and going directly to the people to give out their items. Mm. But for any organization... Just like, like the Way Media General 3 Foundation like, is like doing, doing. Because we are cutting across. Yes. So you send it to the items. You, you send the items to the various places. But this is supposed to be a central pool. VRA is supposed to have an SOP. They do. They do. I know they do. They do have. But you see, the time has come for them to emerge. I know uh, GMET has. I know uh, Western Housing, they have. Water, uh, uh, um, Water Resources Commission, I know they have. The time has come for them to emerge. Okay. To emerge, do simulation exercises, and to be able to address the situation like who does what. Okay. That's what they are supposed to be doing. Okay, right now we have the disaster. So I think that what we are spearheading now is to make sure that, just like you've mentioned, all the affected communities, the way the disaster has affected those communities are taken into perspective and addressed nationally. Yes. I think that as we wrap up the conversation, Mr. Gidisu, there's been a call for national emergency um, to be declared. What would it do? You, the members of parliament, do we need an entire legislature to reconvene and take a, a decisive national decision on this in terms of maybe preempting voting or allocation of resources, etc.? Because we have to treat this nationally like the way Media General and Three Foundation want us to do. So, you, uh, thank you very much. You know, um, I, I buy into the uh, your idea. Uh, very soon, uh, we'll be going back to to the house. Uh, we are resuming uh, probably uh, at the, by the end of this month or early uh, next month. And I sure the speaker will take up this issue. We have to raise a lot of statements from the various MPs. We can also come as a caucus, as a tea caucus, voter caucus. I think we'll come up with these things so that we speak holistically with one voice. Uh, it, doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't pay for us to be tackling this issue individually. When we come as a group, uh, I think this will help us. So when we resume, um, we will soon, we'll soon organize ourselves and see how best we can uh, okay. uh, come up with these things. So, uh, so if you have items, okay. how do we, where do we send them? Or how do we coordinate with you so that the items, etc. So for example, if we have items, we need trucks to convey them. We also need uh, this better collaboration so that we know that these are the centers where you can send items to this constituency. These are the centers. Let me start from you, Madam Helen. Yeah, when you have items, because as members of parliament, we also want to assist. We also want to help. So if you have items for our various constituencies, we'll come together. We'll come together as a group to be able to get trucks, you know, to load these items to the various okay. places. But I want to use your medium. Please use to, it. To appeal to VRA. VRA is supposed to release an amount of 500,000 US dollars to the VRA Trust Fund to be able to help the resettlement communities. For the past two years, they have not done so. They are supposed to do that annually. Annually, okay. 500,000 US dollars to the VRA Trust Fund to be able to help the resettlement communities. So they are in lieu of For $1 million, do years, one million dollars. So okay. two years, they have not done so. So the two years they, have, they haven't done it, it means that they owe the trust fund 10.10 million US dollars. So if they're able to do that, 
then the, uh, the trust fund will be able to assess in this situation because resettlement communities are involved. So Roland, kindly uh, stress on this issue for us that VRA should release the money that they are supposed to release to uh, the, the, trust, the fund. trust fund so that the trust fund will be able to, to do assist, their own allocation to, to assist the in, this, in, in, in this. And then government should also release. You see, uh, when President uh, Kufour was the president, he was able to release some money to our chiefs. President Kufour. President Kufour. Individually as, as, to as, the chiefs. As, 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 as compensation. Mm. You know, government release as compensation. Okay. Okay. And then uh, the late President Mills also did that. But this pr uh, present administration, for seven years now, they have not released a peshwa to, to our chiefs, you know, for, for as compensation to the resettlement community. So they should help us so that help the chiefs, help the trust fund to be able to help the resettlement communities who are affected. All right. Mr. Gidusu, where and how do we make sure if we have items, the tracks will come in? Because we don't want to fund yes, the thank, tracks coming in. Thank you very much. Just like uh, she, she said, uh, we'll come together as a group and uh, ensure, because when the items are released and being sent to the region, uh, it's going to be, they are going to be given to the various uh, constituencies. For that matter, the MPs will come together, find ways of transporting these items to the various... I don't, I don't think it's a challenge at all. It's not an issue. Well, what is the issue now is that getting the materials. Okay. Uh, it doesn't only go to do with food security and all these things, but it has to do with... Uh, the health of the people. As we speak now, um, we have a lot of waterborne diseases, yes, uh, typhoid, and that. so on and so on. The skin, the skin uh, problems. Uh, certainly. Yeah. So we, we look at the health status. How, what do we do? What support do we give to the, 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 the health uh, facilities so that they can support? And also, this, uh, when these release uh, items are given, items like roofing materials, cement, and so on, because okay. as they, they have, they all live in some switch houses, they have to move to other places, and when they read the structure, they need to roof these places. Where is the task for them to use to roof? The, so, okay. building materials are also key in terms of uh, All right. support to okay. these people. Yes, All right. So, um, we've had a conversation. So, here at Media General and Three Foundation, and Three Foundation is our CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility Subsidiary of Media General. Uh, we are doing this now. The strategy is three prong. But more so, we want to get the immediate needs of the people because water is still inundating the communities yeah. based on what the action by engineers at VRA is and then also what the communication because water has to be spilled and the upper channels are still um, tipping up. So what we are doing is to make sure we bring the relief item. The cement and things subsequently will come when we have dry lands so that our water has receded. Thank you very much. Wisdom Gidisu. He is the member of parliament for Krachi East. Helen in Tosso has also come in handy helping us. Also was on 3FM 92.7 and also coming on TV3 as well. She is a member of parliament for Cratchit West. I've enjoyed the conversation. Let's keep this going. It's a collaboration we're having with all of them, MMs, DCEs, members of parliament, other organizations to make sure Media General 3 Foundation were able to continue the support to the affected victims. Now we have gone, we've got to go to the studio. Edem is available in the studio and now he's going to have a nice conversation with Adam. We have some uh, big announcements to undertake. Let's go back to the studio.